why not reframe it and channel it into the two people in your life that you actually need to please and it's actually beneficial for you to please impressing these two people will actually create your dream life you know we have this deep human need to be loved and accepted and it's based on our need for survival so for example we had to get along with others because we used to be tribal you know we used to live in communities we used to live in tribes we had to be liked and accepted and appreciated by other people because if other people liked us in the tribe then we would get more food we would get better habitat or habitation or is that the right word we would get better resources right if we were liked and appreciated so of course it was to our advantage in that we had better chances of survival and if the people around us didn't like us and we didn't impress them enough and we didn't please them enough then we would get kicked out of the tribe and we would get kicked out and have no access to food no access to habitation no access to protection we would literally be on our own in the wild and we would freaking probably die because there's lions and tigers and bears oh my in the wild right and having like i don't know how big these tribes were 20 people 50 people 100 people you know being in a group of that size it has you have a lot better chances of survival than if you're all alone out in the wild right so it's a very, very deep thing. And it feels like an uphill battle and damn near impossible to overcome it because it's so evolutionary ingrained with us. So here is the download that I got. Here's the point of me sharing all of this. Instead of trying to go uphill, instead of swimming against the current because it's such a deep need within us, why not, instead of trying to get it out of us, why not reframe it and channel it into the two people in your life that you actually need to please and it's actually beneficial for you to please impressing these two people will actually create your dream life okay I've been going around asking uh, my mom and the people that are around me in the last week, like I've been telling them this download and I've been asking them, like, who do you think the two people are? And it was so interesting to hear what they said. The two people that I got in my meditation is the five-year-old version of you and the 80-year-old version of you. Okay. This is exactly what I heard. Live the dreams of the five-year-old and give epic stories to tell to the 80 year old. Oof, so fucking good. This is such a powerful and potent filter. When I started to process my life in the last week through this filter of like, am I making the five-year-old proud right now? Is she proud of me? Is she inspired by me? Am I living her boundless dreams? Like think about the way that a five-year-old interacts, right? They have a boundless imagination. They have no limitations. They're so playful. They're excited. They don't take life too seriously, right? Everything is a game to them. Everything is an adventure. Everything just feels so brand new. They have such a sense of wonder and appreciation and gratitude for life. They're very magnetic beings because they just, they're so happy with so little. They're so appreciative and have so much gratitude for so little that of course like life just keeps flowing through them in such magical and incredible ways they're very inventive there's like a solution to every single problem no problem is too big everything has like a you know there's a solution for everything they don't fear rejection and they're just in a constant state of experimentation and exploration and i think about like when i am thinking about my dream life and when I'm making decisions in my day-to-day -day life, like would that five-year-old who has these huge dreams be so proud of me for living out her dreams? Am I living out her dreams? Am I seeing life through this limitless, boundless imagination? Am I being my most creative and playful self? Am I taking life too seriously? Making the five-year-old within me happy has been such a beautiful filter of seeing my life through her eyes and just making better decisions for whether or not 
something is truly in alignment with me? Do I really value this? Is this really that important? Am I, am I impressing someone else or pleasing someone else over my inner five-year-old, you know? And with the 80-year-old, thinking about like, would this version of me be glad to have done this? Whatever I'm committing to, whatever I'm saying yes to, whatever decisions I'm making, whatever career path I'm on, the partner that I'm with, right? The way I'm raising my child, the way that I am approaching opportunities, the way that I am saying yes or no to things. Would this version of me be glad to have done this? You know, the way that I'm approaching life through an abundance filter over a scarcity filter, the way that I am investing my money and circulating my money and saving my money and spending my money and all those things like looking through the wisest version of myself and making the wisest version of myself proud. And then also taking risks in life and being adventurous and being experimental and doing crazy shit that just makes no sense and makes me look crazy to other people. But I know that one day that 80 year old is going to be sitting in a rocking chair looking back at her life and she's going to be like, holy shit, this is the best story that I am now telling to my children, my grandchildren, my neighbors, anyone who's going to listen to me. And it is such an epic story to tell. Are you giving your 80 year old epic life stories to tell? Or are you living this safe, predictable, mediocre life, right? Think about it. Think about how you're living your day-to-day life, the decisions that you're making. Are you going for the business that you really want to go for? Are you with the person that you want to be with? Are you traveling in the way that you want to travel? Are you saying yes to these adventures that, you know, get you so excited and you know that they sound so crazy, but one day when you're 80 years old, you're going to look back at your life and be like, oh my God, do you remember that one time that I did that? And oh my God, and this happened and that happened. Like, holy shit. Is this version of me, this 80 year old version of me going to look back over my life with a sense of fulfillment, right? Did I choose myself in my life? Am I choosing myself in my life? How can I impress the 80-year-old, right? What would the wisest version of myself do or say in the situation? How do I truly want to live and what do I truly want to accomplish by the time that I'm older and gray? So really like thinking and pausing. And I've done this so much in the last week where I'm like, whoa, holy shit. The only two people that I need to impress and please is the five-year-old and the 80-year-old. Would the five-year-old look at me right now today and be inspired by me, right? Would that 80-year-old be so excited and proud to share my life as this beautiful story, as this exciting, this, this incredible, this inspiring story to share with the world when she's sitting in her rocking chair looking back at her life? Like those are the questions that we need to be asking ourselves. So next time you make a decision to say yes to something, to say no to something, to go for something, to cut something out of your life, to add something in, to make something happen, I want you to bring to mind and literally you can close your eyes and just see your inner five-year-old and your inner 80-year-old standing next to each other, holding hands and looking at you, right? And just tune into which decisions, which life path, which career, how, how you spend your time, who you spend your time with, what you consume, all of these things, all of these parts of our life, how you take care of your body, right? What you eat, what you don't eat, all those things, how you dress, you know, would those decisions make them so inspired by you and so proud of you? And these are the two people, you guys, that you need to please. That's it. If you're going to be a people pleaser, and again, In some aspect, even if you rewire all the people pleasing tendencies and all this need to be liked and, you know, like caring about what others think of you, even if you rewire all of the stuff that came from this lifetime, there's still going to be that evolutionary, that caveman or cavewoman within you who still has a good sized glimmer of that. And so instead of trying to fight evolution or trying to fight biology or trying to fight yourself, why not channel it into a different direction? And it's a direction that actually matters. And it's a direction that's going to change your life. It's a direction that's going to help you literally live your dream life. So these are the two people you need to please, period. 
period.